Hello everyone. Welcome to Static GK quiz number 231. This video is aimed to help you with your state and central government exams like SSC, UPSC, state PSCs and banking and insurance related examinations like RRB, IBPS, etc. I'm with Risha from GK today and I'll be taking you through this. Who among the following can establish an interstate council? Correct answer is the president. Interstate Council is a constitutional body set up on the basis of provisions in Article 263 of the Constitution of India by a presidential order. In which of the following situations a president can establish a interstate council? Correct answer is when it appears to him or her that it would be serving the public interest. Article 263 of the Constitution of India provides if at any time it appears to the president that the public interest would be served by the establishment of an interstate council, he or she is at full privilege to do so. Based on the recommendations of which of the following committee or commissions, interstate council has been set up on 28 May 1990 under the Article 263 of the Constitution for coordination of interstate matters. Correct answer is Sarkaria Commission. Sarkaria Commission was set up in 1983 by the Central Government of India. The Commission's charter was to examine the central state relationship on various portfolios and suggest changes within the framework of the Constitution of India. Who among the following has been given rights to legislate on residuary subject? Correct answer is Central Government. Matters which are not included in any of the three lists, which are Union, State and Concurrent, are known as residuary subject and the Central Government may handle them. If the post of both President and the Vice President of India falls vacant, the Chief Justice of India discharges the functions of the President. For how many times has this happened in India? Correct answer, only once. Only one time did M. Hidayatullah, who was the only Chief Justice acting as President, had to do it in 1969. As amended in January 2009, what is paid salary of the Chief Justice of India? As per the amendments in January 2009, the correct answer is 1 lakh. So 1 lakh per month is the Chief Justice's salary according to that year. Um, currently, the Chief Justice of Supreme Court earns a salary of 2 lakh 80,000 per month and the Associate Justices earn 2 lakh 50,000 per month. The interpretation of the Constitution falls within the domain of the Constitutional Bench of the Supreme Court. At least how many members are required for this bench? Correct answer is 5. The Constitution Bench is the name given to the benches of the Supreme Court of India, which consists of at least 5 judges of the court, which sit to decide any case involving substantial question of law as to the interpretation of the Constitution of India, or for the purpose of hearing any reference made by the President of India under Article 143. Which article of Indian Constitution gives an extensive original jurisdiction to the Supreme Court in regard to enforcement of fundamental rights. Correct answer is Article 32. Article 32 provides the right to constitutional remedies, which means that a person has right to move to Supreme Court and as well as High Courts for getting their fundamental rights protected. While Supreme Court has power to issue writs under Article 32, High Courts have been given the same power under Article 226. Who among the following can establish a common high court for two or more states or union territories in India? Correct answer is parliament by the law. India is a democracy having a federal structure of government. Laws are made separately at different levels by the union government, federal government for the whole country and by the state governments for their respective states as well as by local municipal councils at district level. The legislative procedure in India for the union government requires that proposed bills pass through the two legislative houses of the Parliament of India, that is the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha. The legislative procedure for states with bicameral legislatures requires that proposed bills are passed at least in the state's lower house or the Vidhan Sabha and not mandatory to be passed in the upper house or the Vidhan Parishad. For states with unicameral legislature, laws and bills need to be passed only in the state's Vidhan Sabha, for they don't have a Vidhan Parishad. Which among the following fundamental rights has been most controversial? Correct answer is right to property. The 44th Amendment of 1978 deleted the right to property from the list of fundamental rights. 
a new provision article 300a was added to the constitution which provided that no person shall be deprived of his property save by authority of law that's all for today's quiz until the next video goodbye